Let us now simulate random walk using the random number generator. For illustration purposes, we take a simple one dimensional random walk. We also try both symmetric as well as asymmetric random walk. To recapitulate, a random walk is basically a jump on a discrete lattice, the jump length in each ith attempt we call it as sigma i or ith step, sigma i equal to either plus 1 or minus 1 with the probability let us say p here with the probability q such that p plus q is always 1 and if p equal to q equal to half it is a symmetric or else it is asymmetric or random walk with bias. So, what is random walk? It is nothing but the sum of this displacements so sigma i. So, we say that x i, so some x in n steps is nothing but i equal to 1 to n of the values of sigma is obtained in each step either plus 1 or minus 1 in simplest fashion. But that plus 1 and minus 1 need not occur all the time with equal probability. If you decide to have a forward bias then more often the plus 1s will occur. So, that will be p more than uh, half case. So, likewise both can be simulated using a random number generator and that is what we will uh, the kind of program we have to write that is what I will show in Mathematica. So, this is the program here some let us say 500 step random walk has to be generated. Here I consider p set is a value which you assign if it is 0 0.5 it is for symmetric and if you put say 0 0.6 then it means that the forward jumps are higher than the backward jumps. Instead, if you put say 0 0.4 that is less than 0 0.5, then it is the other way. Backward jumps will be more, more often than the forward jumps. We will see why, what is this p set when we go along. So, this is basically a beginner to a do loop. We start with some integer and uh, some initial values uh, of sigma. Then you start with any uh, x initial displacement. So, enter a do loop here with the label 2. So, print n and x generate a random number. So, r n is now a command random is a command which generates a random number r n. Now, the sigma that is the sigma i which I mentioned in my previous slide is the jump length at the ith trial or ith step. So, that is decided by an if command. If the random number I generated is less than p set, then please it says jump 1. If it is more than p set otherwise the, the contrary of that, then it will take minus 1. So, in this case p set is 0 0.5 and if r n is less than 0 0.5 that is all the values of the random numbers occurring below 0 0.5 it will jump left, uh, it will jump plus 1 forward or else it will jump minus 1. So, if p set is more than 0 0.5, let us say 0 0.6, then random numbers will occur 60 percent more often between 0 and 0 0.6. So, it will be then forward jumping, it will taking one value 60 percent and the minus 1 value 40 percent of the times. That is how this p set number makes use of the property of uniform distribution of the r n generated. Since it is a cumulative is proportional to x itself, p set cleverly uh, helps us to decide uh, to execute both symmetric as well as uh, asymmetric random walks. So, once p uh, sig is noted for each jump, 
then we simply add it to the previous displacement x is now the displacement from the origin from the starting point. So, x equal to x plus sigma accumulates uh, is a displacement if adds or subtracts depending on the value of sigma obtained it can be any of the plus or minus 1 then the whole process random walk continues n equal to n plus 1 and you have to stop when you want. So, here n s is taken is 500. So, it simply generates 500 such steps uh, 500 displacements yes. So, we can see some printouts is very simple printout here. So, each step number you can print out and the value of in fact you can add many things if you want a sigma value is obtained in each case also you can print out for any analysis if you want to do correlation studies and all then x n also you can uh, print out the total displacement it has suffered at nth step that information is also available. So, this can go on and on simulation is it does not talk of probabilities right you will generate probabilities based on the grouping of this x n and all that. So, here it is just every, every trajectory can be obtained this way. So, next uh, we can see that this is now left left one is a symmetric random walk with the p equal to 0 0.5. These are some 5 4 values generated about 4 of the each of them is a 500 uh, step walker and a single step if you see it may not a uh, single graph or path this is one of the paths the 500 steps you can see lots of internal wiggles as well and there are wiggles at various levels if you go on resolving there is a lot of self similarity that you will see. However, the paths can be totally different in the next uh, sequence of trials you are doing and paths not only they can be one sided in any one of them they can even be multiply crossing the origin quite a few times. Hence, in order to estimate the character, we have to now do statistical analysis of all this. So, basically the stochastic simulation is over, the rest what remains is statistical analysis that is how the mean, mean and the variance of these uh, ensembles averages uh, can be obtained. Uh, you can convince yourself that it will satisfy with all the theoretical results that we have got that x bar equal to 0 and uh, I mean sufficiently large or it will be normally distributed around the true mean all that central limit theorem aspects will also come and the uh, main point is x n square bar will be proportional to n itself that will also uh, emerge from these things. Uh, how number of such trials you have to execute ensembles you need to generate uh, might vary uh, 5 sometimes may not be sufficient but that is a matter of detail. But basic process of generation is what uh, we intended to learn and that we have done here. Same thing you can execute for asymmetric random walk you look at a slight difference instead of uh, 0.5 we took p equal to 0.55 here and you can already see a tendency to move one in only in positive direction because it was a forward walk. So, sufficiently large number of steps almost direct uh, the motion uh, along the direction and that is why we called uh, p x s over q as a virtually equivalent to a forward velocity or a forward drift in when we went to continuous formalism. If p was less than 0.55 I mean less than 0.5 say 0.45 one would have seen a downward drift like this uh, like a backward motion. So, many such interesting features you can simulate by a simple program using the random number generator uh, uh, and summing of the displacements. So, th just uh, we leave it here uh, innumerable exercises can be done here the idea is to give a, a basic very basic understanding of how to use a random number generator. Now, we uh, perform a numerical simulation of another aspect of uh, stochastic studies that is probabilistic analysis. These were all path generating analysis basically random path generating analysis, but we also saw that matter of actual practical interest is probability distributions. So, we developed random walk equation for occupancy probabilities then we moved over to Fokker Planck equation and for probability densities and once probability densities are obtained directly then you there is no need to look for different paths. So, that is the idea. So, it is interesting to know how to solve some practical problems uh, of for probability densities. So, that we uh, 
consider the case of a gambler's ruin. So, we take a case of a gambler's ruin in which a gambler is sandwiched between two end points either getting ruined we call it as the lower end point or hitting his fortune, hitting his target fortune or winning the game which, which will be a large uh, amount, but it will be upper end point. So, we can consider simulation of of gambler's ruin. That is where it is. I forgot. Solution to gambler's ruin problems. Why a Fokker Planck equation approach? So, this is numerical solution, we have obtained certain analytical solutions, but we do it via numerical solution. So, to recapitulate we have a two boundaries, this is ruin and this is win and Grambler starts from somewhere, goes on betting like random walking actually and if he strikes at the ruin, if he gets ruined then the game stops, he no longer is able to walk. Similarly, if he wins also the game stops because he has already won and he walks away. So, we, we have solved it as a ultimate probability problem by random walk methods. However, it could be of practical interest to see what is the probability that he wins in a finite step interval or finite time interval that is a little difficult to do by discrete step methods, it is somewhat easier to execute it by via Fokker Planck equation, because we have developed the Fokker Planck equation approach as a continuum approximation to discrete walk approaches. So, once we go that it becomes now a problem of solving a differential equation basically. However, when we do that it is no longer just the gambler's ruin it is becomes equivalent to a two absorber problem of random walker, two absorber you can call it. So, 0 an absorber and the uh, I mean what ruin, the ruin is a ruin and that is ruin and win both are absorbers. So, we now therefore, consider it as a transport problem basically of a random walking particle or a diffusing particle. Let us for symmetry purposes keep uh, the absorber as a length 2 L from minus L to L. Let the origin be located here, particle can start from any point x naught and it diffuses with a certain diffusion coefficient d which is basically a map from the random walking equation L square by 2 tau. There may be a forward bias, there may be a may not be, it may be what I mean to say is it is symmetric or uh, asymmetric random walk. And we ask a question, what is the probability that the random walker touches L from which he cannot come back once he touches? in a certain time interval t. So, it is a finite time gambler's win problem, finite time or you can call it as step gambler's win problem. We can do it systematically in by numerical methods. For that we have to set up the corresponding differential equation, we do it uh, as follows. we uh, go revisit the subject of the Fokker Planck quickly 
and remember that the FP equation for the problem now statement formulation a diffuser starts in a domain let us say minus L to L, but we can call it as minus 1 to 1 also. This is now the 0 and it starts from some point x naught and it is desired to uh, find the probability of him reaching 1 and I will tell you how to normalize all this. So, original differential equation for w x t the probability density that he is at any uh, point x at time t was diffusion equation d 2 w by d x square and if there is a preponderance of one direction or winning streak or um, losers misfortune, then we can accommodate it by a velocity term or a drift term we said, which is basically p minus q kind of thing into d by d x. If we solve this differential equation, where w is the probability under the initial condition w x 0 was delta x minus x naught where he starts from and the boundary condition w minus 1 t or plus 1 t ok. Let us write it separately w minus 1 t equal to 0 and w plus 1 t also is 0 basically. Uh, well, let us say minus L right now we are talking of x coordinates. So, we will not call it minus 1 minus L to plus L. This is ruin. Then also the game stops, this is win. Now, of course, this equation 1 can be easily standardized. We can define a dimensionless length xi equal to x by L that is why I wrote minus 1 and plus 1 here in the xi coordinate. So, I call it as now xi naught, it is not x naught and this is now xi. My time also changes to a dimensionless time which will be dt by L square and the velocity gets replaced by a Peclé number p equal to u L by d. With that the equation becomes d w by d tau equal to now it becomes parameter free t 2 w by d z square minus Peclé number d w by d z with the same initial conditions that w z 0 equal to delta z minus z naught and w minus 1 tau equal to w 1 tau will be 0. So, it is a well defined problem of solving now a differential equation. We have mapped the gambler's Lewis problem, gambler's ruin problem to a differential equation problem. So, it is virtually like a transport equation now in one dimension where particle has diffusion and a drift. So, it is like a convective diffusion equation mathematically speaking but with, with meanings and implications are drawn from the original problem. I, I just tell you how to solve this problem in Mathematica, there are many ways of doing it. Mathematica has ready made inbuilt commands, so I have so used them for solving and uh, in the next few minutes we will discuss the results and uh, the way to write a program for handling this. move from here to PPTs. So, here is the uh, outline of a program, this is the program uh, used, it is a written in a very condensed fashion to fit to a page kind of thing. So, you have to define the Peclé number. So, this is a equivalent of a gambler's ruin, Fokker Planck equation, you can call it as a diffusion plus bias between two absorbers. We did not do it, we did not solve it so far. Actually, it is amenable to uh, analytical solution also by uh, eigenfunction expansion methods or Fourier series uh, methods 
it is very long winded. So, I did not uh, produce reproduce it here, but it is possible to obtain the solution and compare it with the numerical also we have not done it, but here we only illustrate the numerical method. So, you start with the Peclet number let us say it can be 0 if it is 0 it is symmetric random walk here the number 5 is given then uh, see here the sig is nothing but instead of Dirac delta function you take a very sharp Gaussian with very small sigma. So, it is basically a starting point is at minus half now slightly towards the left he starts because the aim is to reach right. So, we want to see how he manages to reach right even though he is uh, his position is uh, unfavorable to that, but his bias is favorable to that because it is a positive bias. So, it will drive him towards that. So, this is original distribution this is some and time for the all dimensionless time now x also is dimensionless x is xi actually time is tau and uh, this is the domain minus 1 to 1 all scaled by L square by D and Peclet is scaled by U Peclet number is U L by D. Then Mathematica is a uh, very useful differential equation solver numerically. There is a D solve for analytical solving and N D solve for numerical solving command and it is basically D F by D T D for uh, differential here the subscript T is for with respect to time. So, it is nothing but partial derivative of F with respect to D this is a partial derivative of f with respect to x twice d 2 f by d x square. Here it is Peclet number and d by d x of d by d x of uh, f here and with the initial condition f is f not x f 1 t is 0 f minus 1 t is 0 etcetera. The function f in the domain of x minus 1 to 1 and time between 0 and t naught t naught we have taken as just one unit it needs to be solved. Then of course, it extracts the data or the function that it is generated by numerically solving it is extracting out it is a space time profile of the probability. Then our matter of interest is the probability of contacting the upper point 1 because 1 is the winning uh, surface or winning point. So, it has to obtain that current which is by fixed law equivalently is minus d f by d x. So, it evaluates d f by d x at x equal to 1 that is absorption current probability of arrival at 1 per unit time. So, it is probability density it is also known as the first passage time distribution function. So, many uh, interpretations to this derivative. So, now having done that for further integrating I did not use the Mathematica command it was sometimes very much more time consuming it was much easier to use Gauss quadrature far more accurate or I would not say far more accurate quite accurate. I took 64 point Gauss quadrature it is very very dense and it can evaluate any integral in the domain of minus 1 to 1 uh, by summing over some uh, you know Gauss quadrature in itself one has to know this is not the place I cannot teach you here, but Gauss the main idea of Gauss quadrature is it there are some preset points on which the function has to be evaluated and then you have to simply sum over that evaluated function with suitable weights w i corresponding to that point. So, the entire integral is ready reduced to summing, but su summing much more accurately than let us say Simpson summing or any such thing then that is what Gauss quadrature is all about. So, those points are given here 64 values are given you can have even 16 point uh, Gauss quadrature much smaller ones exist 11 point and all, but here we took 64 and similarly the weights for those 64 points are given the function is evaluated though the survival probability in space is defined as the integral of whatever is surviving in f x. So, survival probability space integrated probability density. So, that is available here st then you can integrate the current to obtain the winning probability in a time t that win probability is nothing but the integral over the current that we defined earlier and all this is done. These are the roots just I uh, to show you all the 64 they are available in handbooks. So, you can just uh, develop one zone program these are the x points all the space node nodes actually 64 nodes between minus 1 to 1 
and here you can see 64 uh, weights for all those nodes. Then the, after the program is over you plot. So, various quantities are plotted, we will just see it quickly. These are standard plot commands with various options for you to label them and all that. This is a very specific, you can go through these slides. Here are some of the results. So, just to give you an idea. So, Peclet number is 5, particle is starting from minus 0.5. You can see that the particle is located at the uh, left side. So, it is equivalent to a uh, random. Uh, yeah, gambler equivalent to a gambler starting with the bet point nearer nearer to 0, less than half basically. You can see that as time progresses, the distribution broadens, it is almost like a delta function, then it broadens and eventually the distribution goes to 0 because it will not be a present anywhere, it would have touched either got ruined or would have won. So, the game would have stopped anyway. So, you can see that subsequently the uh, distribution flattens out. Well, this is just a specific show how the how the uh, de density varies at the center. It has to come from the left side, so it to first rises and then of course, it gets depleted out by diffusion and uh, convection. Then you have survival probability, it starts with 1, then the survival probability virtually goes to 0 after some time because there is a strong uh, Peclet number drift which drives it towards one wall plus there is also a diffusion. Here is the first contact time distribution or first passage time distribution. We have discussed it earlier. It would have a t to the power minus 3 by 2 kind of a behavior we had seen. You can see that that it rises and the distribution function has a long uh, as a tail power law tail and it is one of those distributions without higher moments also. This is numerically that we have seen analytically and here you have a numerical solution to that. Of course, the ones we mentioned were earlier for single absorbers. So, the actual functional forms could be different for the two absorbers. We have not done it analytically. So, I correct myself, but this is uh, the opt that obtained by uh, numerical methods. Here is the winning probability. Winning probability uh, you can see that it as time increases winning probability definitely increases, but the maximum here he gets about 0.9 or so of course, because there is a strong bias. If he did not have bias for the same starting point he should have got much less if the it, it should be actually 25 percent or so because he starts at 0.5 it would have been much less and that uh, uh, this program in fact, I have checked that uh, point also. So, uh, to summarize, these numerical exercises are indicative for you to say that simple uh, programs can be written to understand stochastic phenomena and as and when you are faced with the real world problem, we can develop uh, uh, on it and uh, uh, solve the problems by the basic equations that we have set up, interpretations that we have given and the models that we have discussed. Here I close these lectures on stochastic phenomena with the specifically scientific engineering applications in mind. Originally we plan to cover many more very interesting models. Uh, these will be now covered in, uh, in future parts. We have in these lectures now learnt how to develop probably uh, probability density functions for various types of random walks and uh, how we can develop a covering theories for random walk itself via uh, the very well known Langevin dynamics approach. Uh, I wish my students uh, very well in your career and in your future. The so called exams that will come from here will all be from within whatever has been taught simple questions and uh, uh, I hope that all that you have learnt here will serve in some way in enhancing your curiosity and interest in taking the problems in performing either research or applying in your uh, in, in the chosen career uh, that you have. Thank you all.